Hi, in this video today, I'd like to explain how to enable remote direct memory access in a Microsoft Azure Stack HCI stretch cluster and will be run in version 20H2. Let me introduce myself as Ian Sagan from Marvell. I'm a pre-sales engineer and I'd also like to introduce you to Terry Story from Accutech, Chief Cloud Officer. Welcome everybody to our first video on Azure Stack HCI 20H2. This session provides an overview on stretch clustering reference architecture, focusing specifically on network configuration best practices with RDMA. Let me start by explaining what is RDMA, Remote Direct Memory Access, and also the differences between Rocky and IWARP. Without RDMA enabled, if you want to move data, such as a VM from server one to server two, we have to load the data from memory into the kernel OS, then into the IO queue across the network driver, and then repeat the same on the opposite side, as can be seen here. All of this adds additional IO latency and requires a lot of CPU cycles. When we enable RDMA, we are able to bypass the kernel and we can basically move data directly from memory straight through to the RDMA capable network adapter and straight through the network. This way we can avoid duplicate copies of the kernel and data. And then we can move data around the networks a lot faster and reduce IO latency and reduce CPU cycles as can be seen on here. The first implementations of RDMA were with Rocky, that's RDMA over converged enhanced ethernet. This is fine if you manage the network and you require the lowest latency. Originally, RDMA was implemented in high performance computing environments and trading applications where IO latency is key. It's great if you manage the network, but you have to enable this data center bridging, priority flow control, and enhanced transmission selection on every network port on the network and also on the network adapter as well. All of this it makes it a lot more complicated to configure and also once you start scaling up into multiple servers and across wide area networks, Rocky becomes a lot more complex to implement. Whereas iWarp uses RDMA and it uses TCP IP flow control, so we can plug it into a standard network. We don't need to change any settings on our network environment and um, which uses an end-to-end -end flow control and uh, TCP manages if there's any loss, losses and retries. This way it's a lot simpler to implement and the st Microsoft Storage Spaces Direct has found that if you're moving large blocks around, it also provides very good performance and also provides the CPU benefits. And basically we'll be demonstrating how to implement I iWarp with RDMA um, on our environment. This way we can get the same sort of performance benefits um, as you can see, but we're also using a standard network. We don't have to change any settings on the network. He said with the Marvell Fastlink adapters, we support both Rocky and iWarp. So we could have one port running Rocky and the second port running iWarp. And there are cases where we could use iWarp for SMB direct traffic and maybe Rocky traffic for storage. So the good thing with the Fastlink adapters is we support universal RDMA. Today, we'll be showing you the benefits of using RDMA for live migration and some of the CPU savings. So on the top graph, we're showing that without using RDMA, we're using 10 to 15% CPU usage to be able to do live migration from two VMs up to six VMs. Also, we're not getting full line rate performance on the 25 gig network adapters. We're only getting about seven gig out of them. On the bottom graph, we're showing that once we enabled SMB Direct with iWarp, we're able to get full line rate performance and we're only getting like two, two or three percent CPU utilization. And of course, once you get the full line rate, this also provides full performance benefits of bringing down the migration times and also being able to move data around a lot faster across your networks. Slide in front of us represents a high level reference architecture for an eight node Azure Stack HCI 20H2 stretch cluster, comprising of eight Dell AX640s with 10 3.84 terabyte SSDs, providing a single tier 
SSD configuration for optimal ride high ops. This is further configured with two storage pools, one storage pool for each location, determined when you run enable cluster SSD, with cluster full domain set to either site name or subnet. The storage is either configured with two-way or three-way mirrored spaces with storage replica for high available volumes. Volumes can also be just local to each SSD storage cluster in each location. And depending on resiliency, right application, application latency requirements, we'll choose whether the application and VMs run locally or they're high available between the two locations. This slide represents the stretch cluster network and it outlines two fast link 41262 dual 25 gig physical adapters. These comprise of storage A and storage B networks and represent the spaces direct network in each location. These networks do not cross the WAN and leverage iWalk for RDMA, remote direct memory access. Furthermore, we configure three virtual NICs, one for live migration, two for storage replica, and the third for guest traffic. These particular VNets all cross the WAN. Live migration storage replica are further constrained via SMB bandwidth limits and network constraints to specific physical adapters and VNIC adapters. The management VNIC provides for guest access to virtual machines as a layer two stretch subnet to maintain the same IP address as failover to the second location. Because obviously we want to be able to run migrate virtual machines between two different locations. And for desktops, applications better resolve to that same IP address and same DNS name. And this stretch uh, VLAN enables us to provide for that. You'll also notice that live migration and storage replica traffic across the WAN are configured for TCP IP, SMB, and general frames only. And not RDMA. This is to further simplify the configuration to support different spine and lid switch manufacturers. By default on Dell PowerEdge, iWarp is set for both Rocky V2 and for iWarp, allowing us from the um, software configuration side to set either. So in this example, we are going to be looking at what is the default at the driver level for the QLogic 41262 dual 25 gig adapter. And you'll see it's Rocky V2. And now if we want to set this for iWarp, we would use a set net adapter advanced property command, looking for storage A and B, and to be setting the RDA mode to iWarp. So once we do that, and we then display this, you'll see now that both adapters, storage A in location A, storage B in location B, this is the spaces direct RDMA network for each location for S2D, is now set to iWalk. We're now going to demonstrate how to view uh, your Jumbo packet um, settings for each of the adapters. And you'll see in front of us, we have storage A with the S2D network inside A, and storage B, which is our S2D network in, in site B, they both have jumbo package size of 1514, which is the default. We want to set the storage network for both of those uh, locations, storage A and storage B, to 9014 to be the most optimal. So by running this command here, we can now set those storage A and storage B networks to 9014, and we can now show that in effect. The best general package is that we are sending uh, a lot more data in a single packet rather than breaking up into smaller packets. Um, and with TCP IP and SMB uh, leveraging higher bandwidth, we can ensure we get faster throughput, higher throughput, and leverage the bandwidth better with Jumbo frames. The following PowerShell example enables live migration and sets from TCP IP to SMB across all nodes in the cluster. We also increase concurrent line migration and storage migration settings. For links larger than one gig, we recommend to leverage SMB for line migration to better utilize available bandwidth. If you have 10 gig WAN links and above, you can also increase concurrent line migration from two to six or higher and storage migration from two to four or higher to further utilize available bandwidth. And this will be dependent on your individual environments you need to test. To further show 
that we set all these uh, settings across all nodes in the cluster. We run this command. And literally, it will go out and look at a filter list for all of the commands that we've set. And you'll see that we set to credit SSP, which is the default. There is an option for Kerberos, but default is credit SSP. We set uh, migration uh, to true, and we set the virtual machine performance option to SMB. And you'll see it's currently on node six, node seven, and eventually node eight, which is all the nodes across the stress cluster. To further demonstrate that we've set these parameters within Windows Admin Center, we go into Cluster Manager, select the cluster, and if we go into Settings, and if we go into Live Migration, you will see we have six concurrent live migrations. Our authentication protocol is Credit SSP. As I mentioned earlier, you can set for Kerberos, but that requires a Kerberos constrained delegation to be set up. And we set to SMB. And we haven't um, changed the network. We've, we've left default to any network because this would be particular to the environment. In the stretch cluster, um, you know, because um, live migration doesn't leverage RDMA in terms of the stretch cluster supported configuration, um, and you would configure the network appropriate to you for for that WAN and the interconnect, uh, that would be an additional parameter that you would choose. And the same for storage uh, migration. So now review RDMA is set and configured, we want to demonstrate that through Windows Admin Center. So if we go to performance monitor, and you'll see that we've set up a uh, initial workspace and called it QLogic RDMA iWarp. So if I select that, it will take previously configured items and show very simply and quickly the RDMA configuration I have in place. So essentially I have eight nodes in the cluster and this is showing the RDMA uh, on node one. And you'll see that you know, I'm looking at in and out frames per second. Um, there's no connection errors, there's no queue errors, no retry, so RDMA and TCP IP is, is working uh, as expected. Um, and this solution is actually running VMfleet, so you'll see there's quite a lot of activity in terms of RDMA. And, and you'll see that, you know, RDMA is set up on the physical adapters, going back to the demonstration of the previous configuration. Now I'm going to go into failure of a cluster manager, and I want to select five VMs, and I'm going to live migrate these. To a node in the same site in the stretch cluster. And you'll see that migration is by migrating all five of those VMs. And if I go into performance monitor, you'll see on both adapters, RDMA has increased, there's some multi channels in effect because both um, dual 25 gig QLogic 41262 adapters are being fully leveraged to complete those live migration activities. And we'll let those activities drop and finish. And then we'll switch back to failure of a cluster manager. And you'll see that those five VMs have completed really rapidly. So thank you, Terry, for explaining that. And just to summarize how to enable remote direct memory access in a Microsoft Azure Stack stretch cluster. All of the Dell AX nodes, which are fully certified for Microsoft Azure Stack, and you can order those with the Marvell Fastlink QL41262 RDMA capable network adapters, which support both Rocky and iWarp. For RDMA with iWarp, there's no requirement to enable network congestion control or data center bridging, as we use TCP IP window sizing to provide end-to-end -end flow control for iWarp. This makes it much easier to configure because you don't need to change any settings on the network and it ensures there isn't over congestion in the network. So both Rocky and iWarp is enabled as default in iDRAC, 
but what you do is from the operating system you can enable iWarp and then what you do is enable jumbo frames on the local RDMA network to ensure you get best performance and full potential out of the network. And then you can enable SMB for the live migrations and this will leverage SMB direct for local migrations using RDMA and then for intersite migrations it will use this SMB without RDMA to send data across the wide area network. And then you can also increase the number of concurrent live migrations from two up to six um, or higher to be able to get the full potential out of that 25 gig network to be able to migrate a lot faster. So thank you for your time and I hope you found this useful. Thank you. Bye.